organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Eye when TV, scan it, tap it, see how a new app is changing how to read a menu. And how you can begin voting in election soon. And in sports, we find out what it takes to be the voice of the Hawkeyes. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good evening, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Michelle Nago. And I'm Hannah Thompson. Next semester, students will get to see the IMU ground floor for the first time since the 2008 flood. The reopening will feature a brand new food market, multiple TV lounges, and an IT ITC station. And the Iowa Hawk Shop and Bookstore will return with three times more space. A criminal complaint from the Department of Public Safety details a man losing control in the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics emergency room on September 6th. Austin Streets of Makokota is accused of punching a nursing assistant and security guard multiple times in the face. Streets punched a hole in one of the walls and faces up to one year in jail. Today, students on the Pendercrest got offered a glimpse of what Dance Marathon is all about. Dance Marathon's Lime Days had another event on the Pentacrest. A group gathered together to form a flash mob, dancing and doing several chants and cheers. They offered free dance marathon apparel to anyone who signed up for this year's event. The group will be hanging out, handing out more apparel tomorrow at the Cots Plaza. The University of Iowa will participate in a new statewide mentoring program called Million Women Mentors Iowa. The program will, will recruit mentors to encourage young women to pursue STEM careers, also known as science, technology, engineering, and math. Iowa Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds announced that the program today uh, at the state capitol in Des Moines. The program is looking for 5,000 mentors. And as part of the Daily Iowans election coverage, our reporters are sitting down with interviews with several candidates throughout the state, the season, excuse me, to see why students should vote for them. Reporter Cassie Riley sat down with Congressman Dave Loebsack this morning. Loebsack's running, mate, running against Marinette Miller Meeks in November and hopes to serve a fifth term in the U.S. House. Loebsack says he strongly disagrees with Meeks' proposal to cut back funding for the Department of Education and hopes to pass a law that would decrease the interest on student loans. If I can you know, make college affordable by helping with Pell Grants, by helping fund low interest student loans, and hopefully passing a law that will allow students to renegotiate the interest on those loans, as you suggested at the outset, then that's a role that I can play. Loebsack is currently serving his fourth term in the U.S. House of Representatives for Iowa. Potholes and sidewalk cracks may become a thing of the past in downtown Iowa City, thanks to a lofty grant from federal officials. A federal grant of $1.6 million was given to Iowa City after complaints were submitted to federal officials by the Johnson County Task Force on Aging. City Councilman Kingsley Botchway believes that having curb cuts and ramps that are not up to codes is not just a local issue, but a problem across the country. The new sidewalks will increase mobility and access for all residents, including those with disabilities. The council will take necessary precautions to assure the money is being put to good use. Uh, as far as the money, you know, it's just really, um, it's not necessarily micromanaging, but it's just, you know, asking the right questions and making sure that we uh, follow up and make sure that the money is being used correctly. According to Botchway, the council will do with the grant what the council will do with the grant will be decided in the upcoming budget this January. Iowans will get an early chance to put in their vote in this year's election. Tomorrow, all eligible voters in Iowa can participate in absentee voting on day 40 before the elections. Absentee voting is becoming increasingly popular, giving people the option to conveniently enter their vote through the mail. As of Monday, 89,003 voters were registered in Johnson County. Stay with us coming up on Daily Iowa TV. Spotlight Wednesday takes a look at how one entrepreneur is changing the way we read menus. And as many of you know, yesterday was the first day of fall. But Michelle, I'm a little confused. It still feels like summer out there. Yeah, I'm still wearing shorts to class, so Same. I'm not really sure. But our Abby Meyer is standing by in the weather studio. Abby, it doesn't feel like fall quite yet. 
Yes, Michelle, the weekend you probably won't need your jacket, but after today's scattered showers and cooler weather, we start tomorrow at 56 degrees in the morning, and temperatures will stick around the mid-70s, rising to a high of 74 degrees by the evening. Most of the day will be partly cloudy tomorrow, but moving into the weekend, we will see clear skies and temperatures rise close to 80 degrees. The sunshine will stick around into next weekend, and temperatures will be at the high of 70 degrees, and the future forecast looks like we will have plenty of clear weather and comfortable temperatures ahead. Thanks, guys. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Abby. Well, some University of Iowa Chinese international students find reading restaurant menus in Iowa City difficult. On Daily Iowa Spotlight Wednesday, our Suen Wang shows us how one student created an app called Blue Cheese to fix this language barrier. Blue Cheese is a mobile application that could translate restaurant menu into Chinese. It's created and led by students in University of Iowa. They initiated the idea in February. After six months, they launched the app with no experience before. Within a month after launch, we have obtained 80,000 users, and our app was featured as the best new app by the iTunes App Store. With more than 80,000 users, the Blue Cheese app will help a lot for Chinese students and others from the menu. Basically, just scan the menu and then tap a button. You can get the translation of the food. And the app will also show the detail, description, and the image of the food. Now, with the app, before they wouldn't because they weren't familiar with the menu. So now it exposes us to a whole new market. When talking about the reason he creates the app, he said many Chinese students have no choice to go to Chinese restaurant because they cannot read the menu. There are a lot of great foods here in the local restaurants of Iowa City. And I have built a strong belongingness to the community of Iowa, so I wish other fellow international students feel the same. We are leading this cross-university collaboration team uh, as a, you know, students graduate from the University of Iowa. So although we are dreaming, of course, to be a global company, but Blue Cheese app is truly an American dream in Iowa. Si Wen Wang, Daily Iowa TV. The Cedar Rapids School District is getting visits from federal investigators after reports show possible discrimination in the way students are disciplined. A complaint filed said the schools in the Cedar Rapids District discriminate against black students by disciplining them more. Black students make up 20% of the district's enrollment. In data reports, over half of the school suspensions were issued to black students. The Civil Rights Office plans to visit a few of the schools. Tonight, the UI Public Policy Center hosted a free screening of the movie called Woke Up Black at the Main Library. The documentary follows the lives of five black youth and their experiences with the education and justice systems. Producers of the film attended the screening to participate in a panel discussion. Several departments co-sponsored the event. The Chief Diversity Office, UI Chapter of NAACP, and Iowa City Human Rights Commission were among the sponsors. NASCAR driver Tony Stewart will race on after it was decided he would not be charged with the death of driver Kevin Ward Jr. Stewart was under investigation after running over and killing him in a race in New York. NASCAR has since updated their rules requiring drivers to stay in their vehicles after a crash. It was also discovered that Ward was under the influence of marijuana during the race. And now we'll toss it over to our own Taylor Mathis in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio for an update on sports and what's going on in Iowa athletics. Taylor? Thanks, guys. Tonight in sports, we'll show you just what it means to be the voice of the Hawkeyes in our weekly What It Takes segment. But first, we begin tonight with head coach Dave Diani and his soccer squad. The Iowa women's soccer team has two challenging games this upcoming weekend with facing two new teams in the Big Ten Conference, Maryland and Rutgers. Taylor Brooks caught up with the team on the significance of these matchups. The Big Ten is one of the most competitive conferences in the country. Maryland and Rutgers were just added to the conference this year. The University of Iowa's soccer team is playing both of these teams this week, and they tell us their perspective on the expansion of the conference. The Big Ten is a powerful conference, and we want it to keep getting stronger and stronger. So, I mean, this way it's going to attribute to it. Not only does the team get to face both newcomers at home, but the Maryland game on Thursday, September 25th, will be live on the Big Ten Network starting at 2.30 p.m. For the kids here, all the wires and the cameras on the sidelines and the 
the uh, the timeouts halfway through the halftime. Those are going to be really cool for the kids to, to experience. And then to play Maryland coming from the ACC is going to be even better. Even with the Hawks starting at 3-0 in Big Ten play, for the team, they just see it as playing to their potential. Overall, it's soccer. You know, everyone knows how to play soccer, whether it's passing the ball and passing it to each other, or passing to space, like, you just adjust. Sometimes you're used to a different way, sometimes you're not, and you just have to adjust and mentally know how they're going to play and come out against them. These two new teams come from tough conferences, making these matches defining games as the Hawks approach midseason. It, it makes for a very difficult schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we're playing 14 Big Ten teams. You don't get a break, and there's outside from the ACC, there's not a harder conference this year. For us to be in. Taylor Brooks, Daily Iowan TV. Thanks, Taylor. The team will be facing Rutgers at home this Sunday. And for our weekly What It Takes segment, Zach Mackey takes a look at an important voice in Iowa football. Zach? Thanks, Taylor. You hear his famous pipes on Saturdays in the fall many times, saying those two words that made him so recognizable to Iowa fans. Touchdown, Iowa. Gary Dolphin has been the play-by-play -play announcer for the Hawkeyes for the last 18 years, and I found out what it takes to be the voice of the Hawkeyes. We have a two-hour pregame show, uh, anywhere from three to three and a half hours for the actual game, and then an hour and a half postgame show. So it's, it's like an eight-hour day of nonstop jabbering, and, and thankfully, more often than not, it's been positive versus negative. It's just pretty basic. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, I try to yell, yell, touchdown Iowa, and then touchdown Mark Weissman, touchdown Iowa. Yeah. And the more people hear it, the more excited they get. Yeah. So uh, hopefully they, they hear it a lot going forward. Yeah. It's yeah. a big operation. We've got uh, a producer, a director, a stat man, a, a scoreboard operator. We've got an engineer. We've got a sideline reporter. So uh, as Bob Bowlesby told me when I was uh, first hired, he said, you know, uh, and I did Iowa football for a few years in, in the six, uh, 70s, excuse me. So, you know, I, I grew up 60 miles from here, so I, I understand the culture. And mm -hmm. uh, Bob Bowlesby's great language. You know, I, I hired you not so much for your play-by-play -play ability as you could be a good traffic cop and kind of, you know, keep eight balls in the air at once. And so it's a big production. I say it's a unique talent, but uh, you've got to be on your toes the entire broadcast. And, you know, the, the game isn't secondary, but there's a lot going on around the broadcast. And so it takes a while to balance all that out, but, it, but I, I love it. I mean, I, it just gives you a great rush uh, to be here on a Saturday afternoon and have this kind of atmosphere. When Gary took over, we just fit right together. It was uh, a really a good match, and uh, we continue to have fun. You know, it's big. You develop a chemistry, uh, but what's unique about Ed, uh, in, in a positive way, obviously, is that he's from this state, too. You know, he played here, but to have a Kinnick Stadium full, you know, you're right on top of the field. It's just a great atmosphere, not unlike Carver Hawkeye Arena. It's the fan base. Uh, they're so passionate about their Hawkeyes. And, and as I like to tell people, I'm a big crowd noise guy. Yeah. So crowd noise gets me pumped, gets me going. And, and when Iowa gets on a roll, it's, it's a thing to behold. It really is, whether it be football or basketball. Dolphin's job isn't limited to the gridiron. He can also be heard during the basketball season. Taylor, back to you in the studio. Great job, and thanks for that, Zach. Unfortunately, that'll do it for me here in the sports studio. But before we toss it back to the news desk, be sure to tune in to Thursday's pregame show where we'll have everything you need to know about this weekend's matchup as Iowa opens the Big Ten Conference at Purdue. Hannah, Michelle, back to you at the desk. Make sure to check out tomorrow's headlines in the Daily Iowan. Get a preview on Iowa City's Hamburg Zinn historical role in political elections. And learn more about the demolition of the historical Henry Sabin Elementary Building. And before we go, have you eaten at Jimmy John's lately? Hopefully not, because today it was announced the sandwich shop had a data breach. The chain says credit card data was stolen in between June and September at 216 shops in 37 country, or states. In Iowa, only stores located in Ames, Cedar Falls, Ankeny, and Des Moines were involved in the breach, which is good because I went to Jimmy John's <laughs> and used my card yesterday. Well, lucky for us, Iowa City wasn't involved in the breach. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for tonight's edition of Daily Iowa TV, so make sure to tune in at the same time tomorrow. And while you're away from your TV set, make sure to stay up to date with Iowa City News Online at dailyiowan.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Daily Iowa TV. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? I joined and now I'm in Los Angeles, California, interning for Conan O'Brien at Warner Brothers Studios.